All right, so with the derivatives of sine and cosine in hand, we can take the derivative of basically any trigonometric function. Right? So recall that the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, and the derivative of cosine of x is minus sine of x. Okay, so with these two kind of derivative rules, we can compute the derivative of any trigonometric function. So let's do an example. Let's say we had f of t equals a plus b cosine of 2 pi over t, t minus b. Right, so here t, capital T, is our, our period, right? This b here, this is our phase shift, right? It's the, the phase of our initial... Uh, you know, at t equals zero, this gives you the phase of your cosine. B here is the amplitude, right? Amplitude, how high you're going, right? So if b is equal to one, cosine goes from one to minus one. If b is 10, cosine will go from negative 10 to 10, right? So this kind of defines the height of your cosine wave, right? And a here is just like a shift, right? It's just a vertical shift. Okay. So if we were to take the derivative of this function, right, we'll have to use the chain rule. Okay, so let's first write this as f of g of t, right, where f of g is going to be a plus b cosine g, right, stuff on the outside, and then g of t is going to be this stuff on the inside of the cosine, so 2 pi over t t minus b, okay? All right, so this is step one, applying the chain rule. All right, is to rewrite this as a function composition. All right, step two is to compute these derivatives separately. So f prime of g, derivative of f with respect to g. All right, that's going to be the derivative of this thing. So a becomes zero, b stays there, cosine, becomes minus sine, right? Derivative of cosine is minus sine. So this becomes minus sine of g, right? So this gives us minus b sine g. We look at g prime t, right? This is just a linear function of t. So the derivative of this is just the slope, two pi over t, all right? Then step three of the chain rule says to multiply these together, right? This says that f prime of t, which is df dt, is df dg times dg dt. Okay, so again, this was dg dt. Didn't write it out explicitly like that, but but that's what it is. All right, so df dg times dg dt gives me minus b sine of g times 2 pi t. Okay, and then step four says plug in g of t, right? And that way we just get a nice function of time. So do f prime of t is equal to minus b times two pi over t times sine of two pi over t, t minus b, right? So if you look at our derivative compared to our original function, all right, original function was uh, a plus b times cosine of 2 pi t over, you know, t minus v. So our new derivative, the cosine has become a minus sine. The shift is gone. The amplitude is slightly different because now it has this extra period factor. But on the inside, it's basically the same, right? So all we've done is get rid of the shift and change the amplitude, and then it became a sine instead of a cosine, okay? So that, that's how you would compute derivative of just kind of a general trigonometric function, right? Another one we could do be a function involving cosine and sine, right? If I have x plus sine of x, well, the derivative of this, right? That's just the sum rule. Derivative of x is one, derivative of sine is cosine of x, okay? So nothing, Nothing crazy goes on when we combine trigonometry with normal functions. 
All right, we can also compute uh, the derivatives of the other kind of major trigonometric functions. So other trig functions, right? So tan of x, right? Tangent of x, if your call is sine over cosine, right? So if we take its derivative, right? D dx of tangent of x, this is taking the derivative of a quotient, right? So we're going to use quotient rule to compute this, right? If I compute this sine over cosine, right? It's low d high, so cosine times d dx of sine, low d high minus high d low, so d dx of cosine. And then we square the bottom and away we go cosine of x squared, okay? So then if we take those derivatives on the top, right? This gives us cosine times cosine, right? Derivative of sine is cosine. Here we get minus sine times minus sine, right? Derivative of cosine is minus sine. We get all that over cosine squared x, okay? So then we, we can rewrite this as cosine squared x plus sine squared x, right? So here, cosine squared, this is the same thing as cosine of x squared. It's just a different notation. Um, so we have cos squared x plus sine squared x divided by cosine squared x, okay? And then up on top, we have to recognize that uh, cosine of x squared plus sine of x squared actually gives us one, right? So this is a rule from trigonometry. One over cosine squared x, right? So this, if you go back, right? Cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals one because this sort of defines the unit circle, right? So cosine of x gives you the x coordinate, y of x, sorry, sine of x gives you the y coordinate, right? And a circle, has equation x squared plus y squared equals one. The unit circle has that equation, right? So cosine is basically the x, sine is basically the y coordinate. So x squared plus y squared equals one. So cosine squared x plus sine squared equals one. Right? Really, this is, should be like a theta. This is not the same x as this x. This is the x coordinate on the unit circle with these things being the angles theta. Right, but then when we're going over here, it doesn't really matter that this is an x and not a theta. This still gives us one. Okay. So then this gives us one over cosine squared as my derivative of tangent x. Right, so this is derivative of tangent x is one over cosine squared, or we also write that as secant squared x. Right, we recall that secant of x is one over cosine. Okay, and then I'm not gonna do this out because it'll take a long time, but you could show that, you know, for these other trigonometric formulas, right? So tangent of x, which is cosine, sorry, sine over cosine, right? This has derivative secant squared, right? We could do cotangent of x, which is the opposite, right? It's uh, one over tangent x or cosine over sine, right? If we were to do this out, cotangent x, the proof is almost exactly the same, but it's gonna be a little bit different um, and you're gonna get minus cosecant x squared, right? Where cosecant of x CSC of x, right, is actually one over sine, right? So derivative of tangent x is secant squared x, right? One over cosine squared. Derivative of cotangent is minus cosecant squared x, or minus one over sine squared, right? And then we can also do the derivatives of secant of x, right? That's 
1 over cosine. That gives us the derivative of secant of x ends up being tangent of x times secant of x, right? And cosecant of x. Oh, I put parentheses on all these, but I'm not going to put them on those ones, so bear with me. Cosecant of x, which is 1 over sine x, has derivative d d x of cosecant of x or c a c x. Its derivative is minus cotangent times cosecant of x. Right. So these formulas are are almost symmetric, but but not but not quite. Right. There's minus signs and there's signs and cosines that get swapped around, but they're very similar. Right, and we can prove cotangent, secant, cosecant by basically applying the quotient rule to these formulas. Right, we can prove these via quotient rule, but I won't. Okay, just just for your reference, these are the formulas. Okay, so you can memorize them, or you can just apply the quotient rule each time. Yeah, it, either way is fine. Right, so if all you memorize is sine and cosine, you'll be able to calculate the derivative of any other trigonometric function by either doing it out with the chain rule, like we did here, or by using some sort of quotient rule, like we did in the tangent of x formula. Right? These are all still quotients, right? Cosine over sine, one over cosine, one over sine. So quotient rule will work on all of these. Right? Or you can even do like power rule on these ones. Okay.